this was a great lady by any standards. They have just told you that she was baptized in 1929, confirmed in 1936. But they have not told you that she was the first African nurse, the first woman who went to school and trained and qualified as a nurse in the whole of Republic of Kenya. This is the lady who is lying there. The whole Republic of Kenya. She was the first lady to open a savings account. I don't know where you put that, uh, that saving account book. Her, her saving account book is still available here. She will be there in the, in the museum. She opened it in 1938. She opened a savings account in a bank in Kakamega. A society that does not empower the other gender cannot prosper. Many of us were told about the hustlers. Majority of the people who were described as hustlers were young people. And we went by that narrative, with that narrative, until a government was announced, and that government is the current government. I want to request the young people, now that you have graduated from that hustler narrative and become Gen Z's liberators of this nation, stay there. I want to request the young people who have a longer stake, a bigger stake, a larger stake in their individuality and collectivity in this nation. As you have said correctly that you are partyless, tribeless, and you are everything, I want you to know that what you are doing is about the spirit of the nation. Do not discriminate in the future when you are looking for elective leadership. Do not incriminate, do not discriminate on the basis of age. Musije kama vijana museme ati amtaki waze ama amtaki wengine. All of us are responsible for the leaders we elect and the leaders must also be responsible and accountable to us. Let us go to all elections as a truthful people is when we will get truthful results. Nziyoke look a different conversation that has fundamentally shifted the politics of this country. <laughs> fundamentally shifted, it will never be the same again. We will never again have a country where there are shareholders and non-shareholders. We will never again have a country where opportunities are only given to certain groups and not others. We will never have again have a country where public servants swallow money and vomit on the people. This is the end of that. And as a country, we must now have a conversation, conversation on how the politics of this country is going to shift forever so that this country can never again be a preserve of just a few people and just a few elite and the leaders must work for the people if any public officer is not of sound mind then it does not deserve to be a leader of any position that is elective or otherwise delegated i think that from the statements that you have seen our president communicating in this country i am tempted to believe with a lot of sympathy and empathy to him, that is not of sound mind. It's not of sound mind because young people of this country have enlightened themselves on political issues of this country. And they are talking about serious issues of serious craft in government, institutionalized and bided corruption in government. And even every single time that the president comes out to speak, he does not speak on the actions that the young people are saying. And I want to make it clear here to, the, to Mr. President that Article 131 of the Constitution defines the presidency as number one, commander-in-chief, number two, head of state, number three, 
a symbol of national unity. Every single time you have spoken to people of Kenya, you have only spoken to the people of Kenya as a commander in chief, which basically means somebody who is overwhelmed with power for power's sake. Because Gen Z's are saying that Mr. President, can you for once and for all dissolve and not reshuffle your government? So that if you dissolve that particular cabinet, then we can even have at least five Gen Z's entering cabinet because they understand the work of cabinet better than you. And you don't listen to them. These Gen Z's came to parliament in a constitutional order and a constitutional democracy. If the people come to parliament, the parliament ceases to exist. The government ceases to exist. It basically means that there is no confidence in both the government and parliament. Jesus are saying, resign and go. That's what Jesus are saying. You're not listening to them. In a good way. And what they have told Ruto, which Ruto is not hearing. They said reject, not amend. Even us in parliament, you have given us a face. What was going on in parliament was a shame. They used to come to parliament. They don't even come into the parliament. They just walk in, go have tea, walk to state house, come back with, the, with whatever they said, what the boss has said, and come and put their finger and say yes, without considering anybody or people of, of Kenya. So what has happened? Even me now, I'm able to walk in parliament in another style, different one. Thank you very much, Gen Z. And Mwendele na Mwendele, we will support you and we will be consulting you. We must realize that this country is greater than any one single one of us and Kenya is our country. Nobody was invited to be a Kenyan. We are all Kenyans by our right and we must have a conversation as a country. Please, we are with you. Do not relent. Do not retreat. Do not surrender. The moment you do that, you will be vanquished. You have done certain things that we have not been able to achieve. But in only two weeks, you have given a paradigm shift to the management of our country. We will support you. We are with you. And I know in Baba's heart of hearts, you are residing there. Baba loves you. And he will say that for himself. Siku ile tulipiga no. Wacha ni kuambie watu wa Yesu wanajua kukimbia. Omera niliona hawa kwa panel. Ma 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 na saa zingine tuko na shida kupata watu wanaenda Olympic. Na huko bunge iko watu wanakimbia sana. Na tuliwaambia mkichapa hii yes yenu watu watakimbia hapa. Na jenzi walikuja kututembelea bungeni. Na tunawashukuru next time mkikuja fanyeni appointment wakaribisha vizuri mukule vizuri na muziaribu mali. The mass or the celebration is over and now is the time that I hand over the mic to my friends on their time they might not be able to stay with us for long. So I give back the mic to my brother and from there we'll move on. Thank you. Your Excellency, Engineer Dr. Raila Molo Odinga. Your Excellency, Dr. Aida Odinga. Your Excellency, the government speak. Allow me then to call upon Senator Beatrice Ogola, who will lead the first session and then we'll conclude the second one very The elders, our dear sister, Lady Aya, to the leadership that has been recognized here, the friends, and that is to recognize uh, the families that make this home. I want to recognize your game, Mami Go, to welcome us here. Uh, led by Yaduong Ojo. Yaduong Ojo, Kamayinchie, Elia. Ojo is the chairman of the Duong community in Elia. 
Mr. Honorable Raila is now old. But if I'm here standing as the, the chairman of Gang Community in Uriri, he's a young man behind me who's very old and should now come back and rest. There was a senior chief in Alego who called him a very young man. And every son in law, the Dongre and Rodinga is old. You are a very young man, very young boy, continue kicking you are kicking everybody, kicking around. And recognize your game, Pania Dalaka. Mr. Ting, welcome, and as you come in, I want to. Oh. The entire leadership of Bawa Kwapa, Kwa Majina Yale Mumeskian, I'm called Ateng Oyo. Ateng Oyo, ni familia i bomba, kutoka game uke. Mama Rosa no erikite, mama kadu biruge, nitinu kumkumi, hiru gentu kute. Mama no kao nitindari yo mano da boka. Mama no kao nitindari yo mano da boka. Mama no kao nitindari yo mano da boka. Mama no kao nitindari yo mano Rosa Honge. I want to take this chance to welcome the representative of your Kisa, Mr. Jeff. I'll be representing the Kisa community and I have a written speech from and unforgettable personality remain deeply appreciated and remembered in our lives, particularly for those of my age who have obtained how he and his brothers and cousins donated and participated in the family at King African Rifles, known as King George the Sixth Hospital. You welcomed visitors with open arms and ensured they left with something in their hands. Beyond that, you paid school fees for many young boys and girls understanding that education is a Kinzofu Amonga, married Mr. Okeno of the then railways, were the cherished Sanjays in our family. Your love for your nephews and nieces was unparalleled.